Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Happy Monday. Hope everybody's Ooh. having a great start to the week and had a wonderful weekend. Yeah. We'll start um, streaming next week, too. I know you guys a lot of are asking about it. Well, I'll set it up so it streams. Sorry about that. We're still right now just recording it and posting, posting it to YouTube. Yeah. But that way, everything will be done the same way. Yeah, you can just log into YouTube and stream it and see it. Yes. So um, today, today? today, we're here with our... Our newest launch, much anticipated, um, much anticipated yeah. methylene blue. Oh, okay. Right. In this adorable little container that you pop open. Yeah, and show how that that where yeah, it breaks. Yeah, you don't have to open it from the top. It just flips open, almost like um, some band-aid containers. You know, can do that, and then you can take a strip out. Super yeah. easy. Yeah. And then here's the the foil wrap. So when they come in these thin little foil wraps, you open the foil, right? It just mm -hmm. peels open, and. Uh, just We're for well, so just why not? Just for some viewing pleasure. Let's just go ahead and drop that water soluble. Actually, it's really pretty. <clears throat> water soluble fiber in the water. Yes. So, um, what I first want to talk about is really uh, neurodegenerative diseases and how it's um, plaguing us. And obviously, what we have to work with with the the drugs on the market. Clearly, they're not working. Otherwise, we would be in a much better situation than we are. Not very promising. Not at all. And it's very sad. And it's something that's always on my mind with aging. It's just because I, you know, you see people that go through it, your your loved ones, your friends, and it's very, very scary. I mean, I think we we know got at least two two handfuls of of at least friends, parents, or mm -hmm. um, aunts, uncles. You know, my aunt personally going through this, and it's just a very sad thing. Um, so when it comes to what goes on there, you know, we, we talk about mitochondrial metabolism. You've heard us talk about mitochondria. Those are the powerhouses of our cells. Those are the things that are responsible for the energy. So what happens as we age, as our brains age, is our mitochondrial metabolism decreases. So that energy production inside there, in all of our cells in our body, that energy production goes down. It's not happening like it should. Um, and that leads to, I mean, for simple cases, just memory loss, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, lack of uh, focus. Sure. But then obviously our extreme cases, our dementia, our Alzheimer's, um, which Parkinson's. are Parkinson's, all very, very, very prevalent. And, and again, scary. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to um, take supplements, um, do things helpful for our body, lifestyle um, mm -hmm. medicines that can prevent that from happening that can come in and jump into that mitochondria and help that energy production. It's like your electron transfer chain, but I know that's getting a little technical. Um, and that's the goal with this. And that is really the goal with methylene blue. It and, definitely yeah. is, 100%. I, I think today's discussion is as much about metabolic health as it is about a supplement. I, I think that supplements are only like one part like when we talk about it and you know i we talk a lot about aging and how the signs of aging originally start to show up and for for lisa and i most of the time we say well look it's it's a physical sign it looks like a lack of muscle mass it looks like sarcopenia it just looks like somebody that hasn't been able to maintain healthy lean muscle mass as they age but unfortunately with brain health and i, I don't like that term so much but it's typically you know a process that start can start at any time can really start at any age especially now with our environment, the foods we eat, the toxins we're exposed to. The, so the environmental impacts are actually pretty great in this category. And you don't recognize that it's going on. It's not visual, like you said, with like muscle loss. You don't recognize it's going on yeah. until it's a little bit too, there and too late. Yeah, but right. And so that now I'm starting to shift sort of my, my way of viewing aging a little bit. It's like, of course, there's the physical manifestations of not having enough muscle loss or muscle mass. But then you start thinking about the way the brain health sort of – the the transgression of like the, the way it changes and evolves and, and how early of an age it can be, can set in. And you can start with like, you hear people describe as brain fog or lack of focus or uh, inattention, that kind of stuff. Or um, So anyway, that's the really like, when I think about this discussion, I'm thinking metabolic health. And what does that even mean? She talked about mitochondria, she talked about electron transport chain, but really it's about like metabolism. Maybe we just can use that word as met, met, metabolic so that we're thinking about the movement of energy and how our bodies derive energy and specifically how our brain is, is using the energy that's created right. and so ways to optimize. With, with metabolism, I mean, I'm sure everybody's, your first thought is like we talk about, we want to increase our metabolism in our bodies so we like can lose weight, right? That's, that's increasing the energy production. So it's the same thing, but it's going inside, it's in the cell, right. on a cellular level. Sure. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think that's what we should do. I think we should talk a little bit about the way the mitochondria is, works, the way that our energy is moved. It's not created or destroyed. It's just a, it's a transfer of energy. And the way that aging sort of starts to slow down that whole entire process, you know? So, okay. all right, so cellular health. So think about the brain as being an energy demand center, very high energy demand center, the brain and the heart. But the brain is only about 2% of our body weight, yet is about 20% of our energy consumption. And the brain also, along with the spinal cord, is considered the central nervous system. And there's an entire barrier, it's called the blood-brain barrier, that protects the central nervous system. And, the, and so it, what that does, it's designed so that toxic metabolites and things can't really easily cross it and get into the CNS. That's the whole idea. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes when we start talking about methylene blue and exactly how it works. But within the, within the cells, just on a basic cellular level, we learned in like high school biology, I still learned a word powerhouse, but the mitochondria act as powerhouses. They, that's where the energy is transferred. It gets moved and it gets, it gets designed or put into a way that the body can use. So within the mitochondria, you actually have a process called the electron transport chain. And that's the process. And I'm going to use an analogy similar to like, similar to like a, a train going down the tracks. So, so for cellular energy, typically it's glucose. For normal respiration energy, we'll, it'll use glucose and it'll burn up the glucose and it'll create metabolites, which typically in this case are oxidants or free radicals. So a train is going down the tracks burning coal. Well, it's transferring its energy, it's making energy, and then it's creating toxic metabolites in the form of smoke. And so the body has a very big job of cleaning up this mess. And it's a constant mess that it's going through and cleaning up. And as we age, sometimes those systems start to break down. A typical cell, I think, has between 1,000 and 2,000 mitochondria. But again, as we age, we're constantly tearing them down, building new, making new, making new. And over time, as we start to see the system sort of break down, I think that's when you start seeing the signs of aging and the signs of disease really start to set in. It's a mitochondrial-based disease process. And it seems like that's really where most of our anti-aging experts and longevity pioneers were really putting a lot of effort into this category, you know? Yeah. So, all right, cool. Uh, let me see what I have for my notes. Um, I think we can talk about meth methylene blue then, now, Lisa. Why don't we go okay. into that? So, all right, we, first of all, guys, this, this came up with Lisa and I as we're talking. Do me a favor and be aware of your searches, your internet searches. You will find stuff out there that is not accurate. There's a lot of misinformation in this topic. So just don't, you know, try to, try to validate or verify the source of information that you're getting. Uh, methylene blue has been around for over a century, probably 150 years or so. It was originally developed as a synthetic dye. Um, it is in the form of a salt. Um, it later was found because the way that it was being used to dye slides and to, for microbiology, that they identified that it was killing viruses and bacteria. And eventually it was used as um, a treatment for malaria. So widely known for treating malaria. Scientists then started to really study this molecule significantly. I think the World Health Organization still has it listed as an essential medicine um, because it's of its, of its utility. Um, but what's cool about methylene blue is that it's a really small molecule and it has both water loving and fat loving properties. And that's key for the blood brain barrier. I was gonna say, cause it can, yeah, it can it readily crosses the blood brain barrier. It goes quickly across, um, be mostly because of its fat loving properties, and then of course being like I don't know three hundred some daltons. It's a small molecule, um, but by doing so, it really gets right into the brain and the spinal column. But when and that's where we'll start to talk about the way that this thing works, the mechanism of action, and of course we'll start talking about dosing some of the side effects and, and all those as well. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, okay, cool. All right. Um, and I will say when Ryan said about the studies and know your sources, um, if you'd like some, just go ahead and reach out to me so I can send them to you. Um, Cause it does make a big difference. Again, you can type anything into Google and you could get one saying this and one saying that, but like, mm -hmm. what's the validity validity of those? You gotta know your source. And we'll come back to this a little bit, but like, see, I use, I have clinical references from being a pharmacist and I pay for them. And uh, so I'll reference those. And, and those are almost, you know, those are all evidence-based. They're tied to clinical trials and studies. And uh, often that's where I'll turn to for my information. And I'll, of course, I'll check on some of the ser simple searches as well. But yeah, she's right. Be careful with the information you get. All right. So how does the, how does methylene blue work? Well, 
it, primarily because the way that it's still being used today to treat like cyanide poisoning and carbon monoxide poisoning, it's a condition called methemoglobinemia. It's just a, it's a case where there's not enough oxygen being delivered to the tissues, basically. So this this has the ability to increase the amount of like cellular respiration in the brain. So it carries more oxygen. Um, it can do that because it, of its ability to um, synthesize heme proteins. And if you look up heme and you look at the, the function of heme, you'll start to see and understand a little bit more about how this, this, this product works. Um, meth, methylene blue is also it's a potent antioxidant as well. And going back to the idea of cellular respiration on that electron transport chain and using glucose, they do create toxic metabolites in the form of free radicals. So having that antioxidant uh, highly concentrated in the brain is of benefit. Right, and that's yeah. always the Pac-Man analogy, right? It, oh, comes, yeah. it comes in and it eats those um, free radicals. Yeah, so um, what's very unique about methylene blue is it's considered a redox agent. It can kind of ping pong, it can flip its role pretty significantly. So within the mitochondria, they, there's a process called the electron transport chain. It's also goes by other names, citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle. But this is the chain that, that transfers uh, energy, and it does so by elect using electrons. And so that the fact that methylene blue is an electron donor is a really big deal. So it can actually donate electrons to electron transport chain. It can also recycle those electrons. That's its that's its part in in, in regulating and helping to um, you know to produce, supplement the mitochondria to produce more to energy. Produce more energy. That's, yeah, 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 all the whole energy. Yeah, yeah. So I, obviously, with all of this being said. Again, the name of the game here is we're focusing on the fact that it's highly concentrated in the brain and it's deeply involved in mitochondria and energy production. Yeah. So what does all that mean? So it's going to help us with all of the things that we've just talked about. So from an aging perspective, we're, I know you were just looking at studies now, that statistical significance with improvements in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, so neurodegenerative diseases, still widely being studied and used. It helps with memory, focus, cognition. Um, they say it out of the mental agility. They said you feel plugged in, a sense of focus. Right. All yeah. of these, all of these things are what people report after taking methylene blue. Sure. And some of these studies um, that I was just reading, um, that were, you know, from these doctors reporting that it just like stopped, you know, the Alzheimer's in its tracks, the methylene blue, and it's just kind of crazy to like hear that such like such a strong point. Like wow. Um, and so I'd love to, again, share those with you guys if you're interested in that. But it's just so many promising benefits. And again, what we have our hands on um, from the medical system right now for brain health is, is just so limited. And it, it's just not working. It's not working. It's not working. And it's killing. I mean, it's our caregivers are the ones that suffer the most burden. So shout out to all you caregivers out there. I know how difficult that is on you. Um, but we haven't even started to see the real fallout, the pain from this, 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 you know, I, unfortunately, this growth of a chronic disease that we're seeing. So we've got to start doing a lot more about it. And look, hopefully methylene blue resonates with you. And if it does, great. Um, but the point of today's conversation is just to share, share our thoughts on how, how this can possibly improve your mitochondrial health and potentially have a role in the things we're talking about. Right. So. All right, how do we take it? Let's talk about dosing. Let's talk about the best way to take methylene blue. Let's go to the thing and get some questions and we'll see, because I get a lot of questions. So right now, first question, um, you want to answer? You want to go? Pharmaceutical grade. That's no, the big I'm one. I'm we'll go there. All right. I've had like five emails. So from pharmacy today. perspective, pharma is it pharmaceutical grade? You guys are absolutely right for asking the question about the grade of methylene blue, because it is there's industrial dyes out there that are like covered in metals, high in metal content. So you're absolutely spot on to be asking about what grade it is. Now, look, the, re the reality is that nothing is really pharmaceutical grade unless you're in pharmaceutical manufacturing. However, with that said, this is in fact methylene blue U USP, all right? USP would be considered the equivalent or the source for pharmaceutical grade manufacturing. Um, that's really, really important. So we'll load the C certificate of analysis as well as the metals test uh, up on the website that so you, you guys can reference that because um, that is, that's a problem. So if you're using other methylene blues, just make sure that they have USP, make sure they have their metal testing and take a look at the C of A to, to take, to just, just look at the C of A as well, but the metal testing would be separate. So, all right. That's a big one. Um, and good question. All right. What else? Anything? Um, I think that was like I think really the dosing. I think I get a lot of and drug interactions. Yeah. All right. So dosing, dosing is published most to do, to do with intravenous. So intravenous use is common with methylene blue. All hospitals have it on hand. 
a lot of functional medical doctors, uh, their clinics yep. do methylene blue IVs. Yep. So looking even to clinical literature shows about, you know, one to two milligrams per kilogram um, per day for that's typically IV usage. You're seeing 0. 0.5 to four. So 0. 0.5 milligrams to four milligrams per kilogram per day uh, IV. And so if you assume the fact that there's 100 percent absorption by availability in IV, which is what you should do, then orally dosing, you would think you would need more. But however, more is not always better, especially with methylene blue. There's a hermetic dose response with methylene blue. You potentially could have the reverse effect at high doses. So what are those high doses? High doses are probably anything over 10 milligrams per kilogram per day. Like that would be extremely high, right? And that's just per kilogram means it's 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. But this just assumes it's an even two and we'll cut it in half. So I said it would be 10 milligrams per kilogram. Let's just do five milligrams per pound. You know, for me, that'd be a thousand milligrams in a day. I weigh 210 roughly. It'd be a thousand milligrams in one day. This is 20 milligrams per film. And there's 15 films in, there, in the box, right? So we're not talking about high dosages here. We are not even anywhere even close. As a matter of fact, the low dose range is about 20 milligrams to 60 milligrams orally. So we're on the low of the low, but, but at 20 milligrams has been shown to be plenty effective. That's the point. You don't need to go high in your dosages. And nor should you, because then you can start to run into other problems. So you'll know that first of all, pregnancy and breastfeeding is contraindicated. Do not consume methylene blue if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. If you have a G6PD uh, genetic mutation, you should not take methylene blue. And if you don't know, that's something you can ask your doctor for, but you know, most people would know. Um, and then of course, there's the third one, the big one. So what do I, what do, I do if I'm currently taking an SSRI or an SNRI for mental health or for mood depressive disorder? So the, the, the prevailing theory is that this increases serotonin um, through a mechanism called MAOI. However, that's typically seen in high doses, much higher doses. So at 20 milligrams, the, the risk, okay, let me back up. The risk would be serotonin syndrome. It's basically when you have too much serotonin and a bad, bad things can happen. We're not seeing, I have no evidence, there's no literature, there's nothing to support the fact that 20 milligrams would cause serotonin syndrome. So with that said, I still recommend, though, if you're on an SSRI or an SNRI or any type of antidepressants, an MAOI, which you don't see that often anymore, you should still consult with your provider. And if he says, no, hard, no, don't touch it, you should say something to the effect, well, 20 milligrams orally doesn't seem to be a high dose. Do you have any literature to support that it'd be a problem for me? Because actually what we're finding is that people that are using this that have mental mood disorders, they're, they're deriving a tremendous amount of benefit out of it. Sure. You know what I mean? So I hate for people to get stuck in this misinformation loop where they just don't know what to do and they get scared and they become paralyzed with fear, you know, and I, unfortunately, I feel like that's very unfortunate. So anyway, do a little bit of digging. If you need some literature from me, I'll be happy to supply it to you. No problem at all. So again, dosing wise, I think we're in a good situation here at 20 milligrams. It's per film. There's 15 films per box. We suggest using one every other day. That's why there's 15 in there for a 30 day supply. And if you want to take it 15 days straight in a row, you can do that as well. If you want to take it for two months straight in a row, you can do that as well. But my message, and Lisa, I think, agrees, is that we're actually trying to help you restore the normal function of your mitochondria. And this is one part or one, say, like uh, you know, tool in your belt to, to help you do that. Right. So, like, say, I know I've had the question, like, can you just take one when you need a little bit of mood enhancing? Yeah. So one here, one there, one there. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can. But again, the goal is to get that mitochondria functioning properly to, to um, prevent that mitochondrial metabolism the decrease that happens as our brains age. So it's just like when you take supplements on a regular basis. It's, you know, you're not just taking your vitamin D one day here because you didn't maybe get outside enough. You're taking it to maintain a level. So you're, there's a purpose. As a purpose. So uh, methylene blue is good in fasting. I don't think it over, I would, I would not recommend this later in the day near bedtime. I, I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I like it first thing in the morning. Because it does. Yeah. And especially if you're still intermittent fasting, it does increase autophagy. So that's the cleanup of the cell. It's taking out the junk of the cell. So it can help with that process as well. Um, and there's another part to this. I would like for you guys, if it's possible, once you take methylene blue, you can go out and seek natural sunlight. And by doing so, it actually increases, it provides a synergistic response to the mitochondria. It can actually help sort of pr provide more ATP and increase the mitochondria. Right. And if you don't have sunlight, 
Um, I have had this question a lot. If you have any form of red light therapy um, access to in your home or in you know a facility, uh, that's really where the studies were, were you know are done on it. it is, that's how it's yeah. controlled, but <laughs> it doesn't have to be a lot. Right. Like no. It could just be Ten um, minutes, a lot, of, but it doesn't have to be full body. I no. mean, you could just have a little Couple bit of pounds. there's yeah. um, handheld little red light things yep. for that people yep. use for you know pain and stuff. You can use that red light. It's called photobiomodulation. That's the way that this photon energy from the sun or the light helps increase the cellular uh, respiration and um, mitochondria function. So well, definitely check that out. Within 30 minutes of taking, go out. You can get five, 15, 20 minutes of sunlight, just exposing your skin to it, and I think that's good for us as a whole anyway. Right. I mean, I honestly, personally, I love taking it before like a morning walk in the sun. Uh, cause during my walks is where my wheels are spinning a lot, oh, you know, nice. lots of, of thinking and planning and stuff carrying going on, rock. carrying a rock. Yeah. So, um, I really like it for that. It kind of gets it all done, but you, you know, you do it, uh, how it works for, for you. Um, again, Ryan said there's 15 films in here and I'm just going to throw out the price there because to me, this is crazy. Um, for members, it's only 12.95. So 30 day uh, supply of methylene blue for 12.95. Crazy. Um, non-members, the retail price, nineteen ninety five. Um, let's talk a little bit about how maybe the blue. Yeah. Ah, that's on my tongue. I took, okay. I had mine this morning. Yes. And so did I. So I'm going to show you how ours is different because we're still experimenting a little bit. And if you were on Friday's call, you, you would have seen how Ben's mouth went. <laughs> oh, <laughs> went. So what Ben did is he put the film in his mouth, let it completely dissolve, but he let it all go in, you know, his mouth. That's going to leave you a lot of blue. If you want that, go for it. Um, but you know, we are typically talking to people and seeing people and, and yeah, it's a great conversation starter, but we don't want blue mouths all day. So I'm going to show you mine. Oh, not bad. Really? Not Just much. my very back. So what I did is I took the film, you know, horizontal. I set it down in the back as I, you can, I kept my mouth open. As you can feel, it starts to dissolve on your tongue. I just swallowed water. So it dissolves very, very fast. So I didn't close my mouth. So it didn't go into the saliva all over and get everything blue. So I think that is going to be the way I do it, unless I really want blue. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So figure out what yeah. works for you. Um, depending on where you place it on your tongue, I think this is a thing too, because uh, obviously our taste buds are all different. There are different sections of our tongue. You might feel a little bit more bitter somewhere. You might feel a little bit more minty somewhere. When I put it in the back this time, I had nothing. Right. I didn't even have mint. It was kind of weird. It just was like a, uh -huh. a neutral flavor. So yeah, it can um, cause numbness and tingling a little bit. Yeah, it has a weird That's completely feeling. normal. Well. It will go away. Um, how long does the blue last? Two to three hours. Uh, depends on no, how you... No, the staining on your tongue. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could think it could last all day. It depends oh, on how it can, stains sure. your tongue. I mean, and, and it can cause blue uh, your urine to be green because yeah. the blue makes it be typically yellow. Yeah, completely normal. Normal. Part okay. The process. Will you pull up some Q and A? See if there's anybody here that has any questions. We're running long, but again, I know, that was kind of a new one. launch. So, um, this is recorded. We'll be posted on our YouTube channel right after this. Um, <laughs> this is the Bluetooth challenge. I like it, Joel. Let's do the Great Bluetooth idea. challenge. <laughs> send send it over to uh, what is it? Living good. Live living good with Ryan and Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Let's post some on there, and it's on Facebook. Yeah. That would actually be pretty funny, Joel. Um, okay. You, I mean, you answered that, but you sound Yeah. Is for, is for Becky? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Becky. Um, so you asked if you can take more of his brief at the, at, at the start. You don't need to. As a matter of fact, I, I'm encouraging people to seek out a more of a lifestyle approach to in, improving the mitochondrial function. But certainly, um, you could take this more than once a day. The oral suggested dose that I found on the clinical from uh, to deal with iphosphamide poisoning is like 50 milligrams six times a day. That's 300 milligrams orally. Um, we're only talking about 20 milligrams of film. So if you did, and by the way, you can cut them in half. You could do 10 milligrams at a time. You could do 20 twice a day, 40. You you figure out what works for you. Um, is there any? I don't know. This is just... Uh, there, there is quite a bit out there. I'd suggest you do some ser some searching with its uh, how this product relates to autism um, because we're showing some. There's obviously that's being studied as well. Um, yeah, we did stir the cup. So you're not drinking this in water. You though. can. Yeah, yeah but people that's... people ask if you want to if you want to drink it, you can drink it. You can put you it in a few ounces of yeah, water. Having like blue smile. I see. But if you, if you just did it in a few ounces of water, not as much as this, you could. I don't know. I haven't done it, but maybe I will, and I'll, I'll report back. But or you guys can let me know. Right. But it, it's water-soluble fiber. If you notice the ingredients, it's really minimal. 
Um, it's kind of neat the way that the, the films work and the way that they're formulated. The COIK. Uh, I'll send it to the tech today. I should have already done that. My apologies, but I'll send it up to the tech support today. I feel like what happens sometimes we get so excited, right? When something <laughs> arrives in the warehouse. That I think, we Les launch. Leslie, you might have already heard me answer this, but the form is methylene blue, you not USP. It's USP form. What was that? No. Okay. Age is 18 plus. Yeah, 18 plus. But I did, I read a lot of reports of being used in children and, and pets. I'm not, that's not what this is formulated for, but. So Judy, that's an interesting one. So the question of, is it similar to NAD? Well, I mean, NAD, of course, if you research, it is involved in the electron transport chain, but NAD is another one where you could uh, potentially upregulate, you could become, your body could become build a tolerance to it. With methylene blue, that's not the case. Um, NAD is also very difficult to get in the form of NAD. So you'd either have to do it in injection and IV, but uh, not really bioavailable orally. Um, but good question, because NAD is a big part of the, mitochondrial health yes we equation. talked about helping with memory loss memory big thing with memory oh, this is a question i got yeah i'll come back on that yeah i don't see any real contraindications as far as uh, age goes for elderly um actually it's being used now in advanced stages of people that have neurodegenerative diseases so you're seeing it used in the elderly I did answer that question from Riley about interactions with Zoloft. Um, I would say just go back and listen to the Zoom if you missed that part, but uh, not at this dose. I'm not concerned about it, but I still caution. I still tell you that you should seek out approval from your, your medical provider um, just because yeah, I think it's prudent. Um, I don't know. Take it out. Oh, question about the dentures. Will it stain the dentures? That's a dental, that's a dentist question. Um, maybe you can ask, I don't know, maybe I, I you could, maybe they'll have an answer for that on for you. Um, there are no adjustments. Um, so there's a question from, from Lottie about how could be, uh, would, do you have to change the dose if your kidneys are compromised? Um, I should know that answer, and I actually I don't. I, I didn't think there was any dosage adjustments for 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 like renal insufficiency. I will look at that though. Let me get back to you on any dosage adjustments or contraindications for kidney disease. Yeah, Sarah, I think you should get doctor approval because there's other meds on board that could interact. Yes, the blue tongue can last all day depending on how you apply it, whether the back of the tongue or the front of the tongue. Oh, you'll start feeling, so there's a question from Lisa, how long does it take to see a change? You'll feel it, actually. You'll, you'll feel a sense of connection, focus, energy, mental, like agility is a word I've used. I mean, it just feels different, especially if you seek out some sun or red light. Right. Yeah. Um, Short-term memory loss, long-term memory loss. I've heard people compare this to a um, ADHD medication. People have actually made that analogy that they felt like as if they were taking something for focus. Yeah, so half a strip every day is okay. You you would still want to cycle on and off. If you did a half and so just cut it in half, you did 10 milligrams, I would still say, well, do 15 days on, 15 days off, or 30 days on, 30 days off. It's no, There's no hard line in the sand about it. Actually, for people that are in the studies are using this every day long-term, especially if they're using it for neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so it doesn't have to be on the, the red light. It can be anywhere on the body, really. It can be the face. It could be the hands, the arms. Yeah, I have a face mask. That's yeah, she has a face mask. Put that one on. Brushing your teeth, it may stain the toothbrush. If you try to do that, you might want to just get a dedicated brush to loosen it up. Rinse it with water, mouth would swallow. I think it would be helpful to do that. But again, you guys remember... Back of the tongue, it's not much like time. Not much there at all to get on my teeth. This, got is, anything. this is front of the tongue three hours later. And mine was like so two hours bit, later, back of the tongue. Quite a bit of blue. 
It, you, Michelle, USP is added on the website, I think, um, or it should be on the, you'll see it on the actual back of the box in the ingredients. Which the lay, which is also on the website. Yeah, yeah, so it, you're right. It's not on the front, but on the back it is, on the panel. A lot of, Phil, a lot of promise with ADHD. A lot of, a lot of significant good studies encouraging things coming out on it. Um, remember that we've never drank it. We were just showing the color. You can. Um, but again, in on the top. Uh, oh, yeah, no. this, mm -hmm. no. Yes, you can cut it in half. It will stain your fingers a little bit too. It's just the craziest <laughs> thing to salt. I mean, you're seeing virucidal, you're seeing um, bactericidal. They, like in SARS-CoV-2, like they're, they're also, they were looking at it from in, in COVID and treating COVID and also on the long haulers, there was so much hypoxia and respiratory distress. Remember all the people on the ventilator, that whole thing? Methylene blue started coming into the discussion. There was a lot of promise. I, I don't know where it stands right now, but um, that was another area of interest. Um, so Eddie, how do you know if you need this? Um, so you have to think that everybody needs this because what happens, how we just described about uh, mitochondrial metabolism and what goes on, that is happening to everybody as we age. And of course, lifestyle um, things affect that, whether it goes slower or faster. But me personally, I'm not messing around with things that are going on up here. So I'm gonna do everything that I can in my power to prevent that from happening. Yeah, and I think, look, as you age, you see it, and you start to see lack some of the zest and, and the energy and you start to feel, um, you know, not, not yourself. And they, they describe it as brain fog and confusion and, and different things of that nature. Now, if you're not to that level, that's great, but maybe a, a time to stay pro proactive and, and focus on right. staying ahead of Have it. you seen anything on traumatic brain injury? Oh my gosh, yeah. A whole bunch of information on TBI four years ago, would this be good for him? So you're, he had a traumatic brain injury four years ago, would this be good for him? Yeah, so there's a strong study out on TBI where it showed statistical significance on, on improvement of symptoms. It was like oxygen deprived, some type of rate, some specific type of traumatic brain injury. Um, and I don't know why it's not used more mainstream because it seems to me that the evidence is very strong uh, for, for TBI. Um, definitely, again, I hate to just say Google search, please like that be you know careful with that. But um, if you do Google that, you, you'll find some articles. You'll find it. I think the National Institutes of Health had a reference to it. That's interesting. Encephalitis, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, I know there is, I was reading studies that has to do with like Lyme disease and stuff like that. How Cerebral, um, so, so, so so Caroline asked about cerebral. So it does increase cerebral blood flow and or oxygen, respir oxygenation, I guess you could say. It delivers more oxygen to um, brain cells, um, increases the respiration of the cell. So I think that's what you're asking. Um, are there any side effects to be concerned about? Uh, not really. I mean, there's some small cases of self-reported side effects of like jitters or nervousness, but I don't think that that's, I don't think that's the normal. I, I have not seen anything that would say that that would be too big, too right. expected. Okay. I've used it plenty of, plenty of times and never felt a single thing about good stuff. Right. Um, and from what I read, what I was reading to say, it's all very rare. If there's, if there was yeah. ever a side effect, and sure. if you say there was any jitters, it subsides like yeah. very Shortly. Yeah, it's okay to put in water. Maybe try putting it in a few ounces and then just slam it back. Use a shot glass. There you go. I'll let it. <laughs> yes, it'll permanently stain your shirt. Did I get it on mine? Probably. That's what I thought he was saying. Yeah, like, <laughs> probably. Yes, it is a stain. Yes, it will stain. A lot of questions, guys. I appreciate all the engagement. Thank you. Um, I, I would say if you're going to put it in water, just drink it solo. Yeah, I don't think you want to sip on it. Chemotherapeutic. So if you're, if anyone is going through chemotherapy uh, has cancer, there's also some studies in the National Institute of Health and a thing called PubMed that show some interesting results. Does it need to be taken away from any medications? Uh, so high blood pressure is an interesting one. If you have uncontrolled hypertension, so high numbers that are uncontrolled without medication or even with medication, you're uncontrolled, you should not be taking methylene blue. You really shouldn't be taking any supplement. You should be seeking professional help to manage your blood pressure. We've talked about that in other Zooms. Please watch our one on hypertension. 
um, because you've got to manage your blood pressure. As a matter of fact, Lisa, you know this, that high blood pressure will contribute to mental decline uh, pretty significantly and possibly put you at risk for a stroke. Yes. Um, Barry is just asking my placement again. So she doesn't have a blue tongue, so I just took it horizontally and I just put it on the very back, kept my mouth open. It, I'm telling you, it takes like a second for you to start to feel it dissolve. Once I did that, I just chugged water. And it's going to take practice. Barry, you're going to, I mean, I hate to say it, you might have to have that significantly blue mouth for a few times mm -hmm. until you figure out what works best for you. Okay. Yeah, I think we nailed it. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome, guys. Yep. Any That's other questions? It. You know how to reach us, um, but we have, yeah, we're at 30. Yeah. Fish wow. Minutes. Sorry, to, sorry to keep you all so long. I just hope this was informative enough for you and answers a lot of your questions and concerns. Yep. And again, we'll get everything else on the website um, for your information. But all right, y'all. If you haven't had a chance, get your methylene blue, $12.95 for your members. Bye, everybody. Have Bye. a great day. See you soon.